The 2018 NFL Draft is less than three weeks away, and players who have sacrificed themselves, worked hard, and enjoyed a successful college career will soon see their dreams come true by playing in the NFL. And we're here to talk it up with one of those players today as we go one-on-one -on -one with Terrell Crosby, ranked as the fifth-ranked offensive tackle prospect at our lads for the 2018 NFL Draft on the OFN Meeting Room with Greg DePama. All right, it's Wednesday, April 11th, 2018. I'm Greg DePama, and thanks for tuning in to the OFN Meeting Room as we talk NFL Draft with Terrell Crosby. Terrell, thanks a lot for speaking with us today. Of course. Thank you for having me. All right, Terrell. So you said recently that you'd like to finish people and be aggressive, then fall on top of them so they know that you're out there. And what I want to know is, is how long have you felt this way about your opponent? Uh, pretty much all my football career. Um, look at like my high school highlight tape. I'm pretty much doing the same thing, just going to drive someone into the ground and either fall on them or knock them down and find more work. Is that something that you feel is necessary also for the position that you play? And obviously you're going to be heading to the NFL where there are players a lot older than you that have been around a lot longer. So that that's an asset, right? Yeah. Uh, I just kind of like to think it's me asserting my dominance on the field and whoever I'm going against, that's my way of letting them know who I am. And I do, I attempt to do that every, pretty much every play. All right. Now, uh, our lads national scout, Dan Shanka, by the way, said in the our lads draft guide, which uh, is available today for orders. I know it's a shameless plug, but uh, <laughs> it's my job. Anyway, he thinks you have uh, hands that replicate bare paws. Can you explain why that would be considered a compliment and what exactly are you able to do with hands like bare paws? Um, we're really just. <laughs> Gone with just because when I get a, like my hand on a defender, they pretty much know it's they over. Have to do something like yeah, they have to do something amazing to get, get out of my grip. But uh, just talking to D linemen I've gone against and just like former teammates, um, they talk about my hands and just the strength of my hands. Um, they all can't stand it, but it's <laughs> in a good way for me, just because I have powerful hands and once I latch on, I don't let go. All right, now uh, we heard that Senior Bowl week went, went well for you. So how do you think it well went? I felt like I pretty much went out and did what I was supposed to do. And it being the Senior Bowl, and that's like the top talented people, uh, like top and seniors. Um, I showed what I can do against some of the best. Uh, what did you think that you had to do to improve your game while you was there? Was there anything specific that – the coaching staff uh, kind of kept pounding away at you. Uh, nothing really too specific. Just uh, just taught me a little bit like new techniques, uh, different ways to jump set defenders on pass rush, and just just small little things. How's your footwork? It was good. Um, got a little uh, undisciplined for a couple of reps, but overall okay. I felt like I did well okay. with my footwork. Uh, you missed most of the 2016 season with a foot injury. Uh, it was just part, part of the reason I wanted to ask you about that. So how hard was that for you, and how is your foot feeling? Yeah, so <clears throat> going into my junior year, um, came off a really solid sophomore year and then just had a lot of confidence and ended up breaking my foot in the third game versus Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, it was tough at first, and then I just realized just think positive and uh, just make the best out of the situation. I, I knew I couldn't play anymore, so I just tried to find – how I could help the team and help myself in as many ways as I could, which is pretty much what I did. And it paid off my senior year just because I created a really solid bond with all the old linemen just because I was able to be around them more um, okay. and just kind of study them and help them learn. So I was kind of like a player's coach for them. Okay. And uh, it just built all of our trust. And then now my foot feels perfect. Um, Great. Went throughout all of last year, no problem. So, it's a great feeling. Did you ever have any injury situations in high school, or was the foot injury uh, in 2016 the, uh, the, the you know the longest that you had missed uh, football time? Yeah, so this was my first like significant injury, um, first time I ever needed surgery. Um, so it was just it was all new to me. Yep. Um, yeah. 
And you said you handled it well. You thought that was some, <laughs> that's great. Okay. Uh, if you had one game film where you were the most proud of that you would like scouts to see, which game film would that be? Uh, I'd say this past season versus Nebraska. Okay. Why? Um, just for me personally, I broke my foot during the year versus Nebraska. So <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. The one yeah. thing that was um, going in that game, I had the mindset to just just kind of payback mode, <laughs> and then also, um, not just every play. You can see me dominate whoever is in front of me. Um, I'm finishing the majority of the plays, and I pretty much dominate the entire game. And by the way, of course, this uh, th- that matchup was at home. I got to ask you how how awesome was it playing uh, at home uh, in Eugene? I mean, that's such an incredible home field advantage. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you see just seeing it on TV, it looks like a real fun place to play. Yeah, uh, can't even really describe how awesome Austin is to play in. Just our fans and just how into the games they get is truly was like special. And I mean, talking to other guys in the Pac-12. And listening to them describe what it's like to play in Austin, they all hate it just because how great our fans are. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> well, maybe it has maybe it has something to do with those know. Northwestern fans, those Northwest Coast fans, because you know how Seattle fans are as well, and uh, you know they can use some offensive linemen too. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> they definitely. Definitely can improve that area. Uh huh. Yeah, so that would be something. I mean, uh, well, well, let me ask you: Did you have a favorite team growing up? No, just. Being born in Utah, living in Nevada the rest of my life, um, never been around a pro team, and so I've never really had a favorite NFL team. Okay. How, how do you, when you heard the news about the Raiders going to Nevada, were you were you pretty happy about that? Yeah, uh, my best friend is a Raiders fan, so I was kind of oh, cool. talking about I was just giving him crap about it um, just because that's my best friend. But um, <laughs> I feel like it's a really good thing for the city, and it's it'll be awesome to see how they do there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what was the most disappointing loss over your career? Most, uh, Nebraska. And let's not say Nebraska. Let's go. Let's go. To, <laughs> let's go to the. Let's go to. Let's, let's try another team. I'd say. Um, wow, one doesn't really stick out, huh? I mean, I'd say like ASU this year uh, was one of the games where I really just afterwards just felt the worst. Um, so we lost the national championship and then like the TCU game both hurt a lot. But um, this game, like I really felt like we should have won. And um, it just hurt, especially like this is my senior year. Um, yep. So I'd say, that, I'd say that game. Okay. Because we were so close. And yeah. All right. Uh, give me a player you played against who draft fans uh, you think they should keep an eye on uh, that is not expected to be drafted in the first round or two. You know, somebody that might be under the radar. Uh, I'd say uh, Peter Columbine or Columbine. Uh, I can't say his last name, but Peter uh, PK from Stanford. From Stanford. 34. Okay. Yeah. And, and w- just, why? Why? Why specifically that player? He's a stud. Um, underrated, but like he'll bring it every play. He's a physical dude. He plays angry. He plays with a chip on his shoulder. He's strong, physical, and he's smart. And he. He knows how to utilize all of that to be a, the most efficient and talented player. Okay, that that's interesting. Be. Peter Calambaye, is that how you pronounce his name? Calamba, Cal- yeah. Okay, P- okay, PK. That's uh, a player I haven't. Uh, I didn't expect you to, to name, so I'll keep an eye. I'll jot that one down. Uh, <laughs> how about a player that you you, you on, on your side of the ball on offense when you were hanging out on the you know uh, and you were resting and over your career and and you just like wow that 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 offensive player that you watched play you just you have so much respect for um i take Alan Stockmore. he's a redshirt sophomore right now at oregon uh, he's been thrown around all over the o-line he was right tackle right guard taking center reps right now and he's embraced it all um doesn't matter where the coach puts him he'll just say yes coach and if he messes up he'll learn from it and fix it right away what what number is he uh number 54 number 54 okay so that's uh throckmorton yep calvin throckmorton okay we'll keep an eye on him uh how would you pitch any potential recruits that want to go to oregon <laughs> i mean Look at the really the city, the staff, the school, um, the facilities, the, the players there. Are, 
Eugene's a great place to live in. I really think under Coach Cristobal, um, the football program is going to go pretty much just up and quickly. He's a solid coach, and the amount of respect I have for that entire staff is through the roof. Um, and they all just mean well, and they're honest people. And <laughs> like, if you're a recruit, I, I don't see why you want to want to go to Oregon. What, what, was that a very difficult situation for you the last few years? Now, you've been there for four years. You've started for four years. That's a rarity, really, average-wise, for guys that come out. Uh, and and you, so you've been through the coaching changes, three coaching changes, right? Or, or actually two. two? Uh, there's three. I mean, I had Coach Chris Wall. That's right. You did. Game, okay, so three. But, so that, that's a lot, three and four years. Yeah. How was that? Was that very difficult for you? Different coaching staffs, little scheme changes, uh, or did you did, did did you think that that actually helped you grow as a player? Uh, I felt like it helped me grow a lot as a player, having three different head coaches, just because each coach brought something new, um, and you can learn from all of them. And just the knowledge I learned from each coach was tremendous. Um, getting to me to where I'm at today, and. I mean, going through all the staff changes, I, I feel like Oregon is in great hands with Crystal Ball. All right. And uh, last question. What about uh, your teammate, uh, Royce Freeman? He's going to be one of these running backs that is you, – you, you see these guys that get drafted in the uh, early to mid rounds and sometimes even the late rounds, and you just don't know which out of the two or three of them are going to come out and they're going to make an impact at the next level. So yeah. why do you think Royce could make could be one of those running backs that could make an impact? <laughs> Uh, this one's kind of hard way to start, really. Um, he's one of the most dedicated people I've ever been around, whether it be the weight room, studying film, on-field work, regardless, like eating habits, he's going to go out and work. And when Roy steps on the field, he's going to outwork anybody on that field, or at least try to. And <laughs> just blogging for him for the past four years, he's not afraid of contact. He will run over a D lineman if he needs to, linebacker safety, regardless. He will try to just – <laughs> Put his shoulder down and run, run through you. So, uh, whatever team picks up Royce, they're gonna do well with them. All right, awesome. That was great. I appreciate it, Terrell. Uh, enjoy the draft. I'm sure it's gonna be a great experience. Where are you gonna be during the draft? Uh, I'm most likely gonna be at home just with my uh, family and loved ones. Okay, that's great. Well, enjoy it. I wish you the best of luck, and hopefully, we'll get another opportunity to talk to you on the other side of the draft. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right. That's Terrell Crosby uh, from Oregon. And the next time we talk to Terrell, we won't be saying Terrell Crosby from Oregon anymore. Of course, we can include Oregon in the description of his background, but he'll have a new team. And we wish him the best of luck. But wouldn't that be nice, being drafted by Seattle? I mean, let's be serious, folks. Seattle needs some linemen. And Crosby would be a great fit in Seattle. No question about it. All right, uh, don't forget to order, as I said at the, at the top, order your draft guides because they are available now. So you'll get it within a couple of days. So now is the time to do it. Go to the RLAD subscription page on the website and order your NFL draft guide from RLADs. And that's got all the scouting reports on all the top players and all the even the players in the sixth and seventh round will be there. For all positions. So check that out. It's the best draft guide on the market. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at PrimeSN. That's the best opportunity also to find out when our shows and these interviews are available on demand. And thanks for listening to this edition of the OFN Meeting Room with Greg DePama on the R Lads Football Radio Network, where it's never too early to think about the NFL draft. <laughs>